Hey, it's Mike Curtis with Trader's Edge, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a few different techniques that you can use to lock in some gains when a trade is really going in your direction. I also talk a little bit about the art of selling calls against a long call position, so I think you're really gonna love this video. I jumped in, right? Netflix had a pullback right here. Oh, let me get the pen out. Have the pullback here. Let me just make sure I pulled up my transaction history. Okay, 525. We'll talk more about this, um, that uh, Netflix trade. So 525 was right here. So I was a day late. Okay, this was the day where we took out that high of the previous day. Does this make sense? Lee, any questions on this in the chat? Let me zoom in a little bit. So here's our pullback, right? Lower, lower, lower. So I'm wanting to see it take out that point right there. And it did it on this day. And in fact, it closed above the high. So I felt confident entering right here. Okay. Could you have gotten in at the end of the day there? Absolutely. Okay. I missed that. I can't remember why, but that had triggered my entry point where I started the trade right there. So we had that pullback nice and controlled, right? Here is another example. We had that pullback. Do you think at the end of the trading day, we were pretty confident that this was going to close above the high? Absolutely. So that could have been another entry right there. Okay. Would that have worked out pretty well? Yep. <laughs> okay. So it's not going to be a hundred percent. It's not going to be foolproof, but what does that show me if it's taken out the high of the previous day? It shows me that at least in this shorter window of time, it's done going down, okay? How do we know when it's done going down? It starts going up. And that's exactly the technical way to trade that concept, all right? So if we're looking at Netflix now, I would need it to take out that high today. Probably not gonna do it, right? We're a little ways away from that. So tomorrow, if this is the high of today, that's going to be my entry point. If I see tomorrow, it goes above that. You know, if tomorrow's candle looks like this, that could be your entry point. Netflix went through its pullback. And now, at least short term, we're starting to, to move higher. Whew. All right. Any questions on that? Anything to add, Lee, while I grab some water? Uh, so uh, Garrett was commenting and saying, does this work for individual stocks? And I said, well, you're just showing it right now, you know, yep. that that you had the pullback and that it took out the, the high of the, the previous day um, on an individual stock, Netflix. So, yeah, I would think that would be a good thing to use not only on the indicators, um, if you're using the um, S&P or the NASDAQ, but also on individual stocks. Absolutely. Yep. Individual stocks the broad markets yeah absolutely when i see that okay when i see that if i've now i closed out netflix and i'll actually show you the transaction history but i actually closed it here okay so uh well i i closed out along the way but i exited the entire position my last contract there so um not bad timing right if if you were to look at that trade which I'll actually show the account transaction history. Not not a bad not bad timing, right? On on that. Now I didn't squeeze out as much profit as I could have because I was selling calls along the way. And by selling some calls, it cost me some money. Does that happen sometimes? Yes. Okay, does that happen sometimes? Absolutely. But this run that I caught on Netflix, 
okay, where this sucker ran from like 360 to when I got out of it, it was at like 445 or something. That is not a common move, right? <laughs> that was an explosive, you know, not, not lightning in a bottle. I wouldn't say it's that rare, but this isn't your typical one month performance on, you know, we caught the NASDAQ being strong. Netflix was a great performer. There was just a few factors that came together where this saw some really explosive upside. So in this example, the sold calls cost me some money. Absolutely. But on your more typical move higher, the sold calls can typically make me some money, which is why I'll do it nine times out of 10, maybe nine and a half times out of 10. Okay. So selling calls. Why in the world do we do that? Well, it generates some income. When we have a pullback, it can be a little bit of a hedge if and when that happens. Okay. So, well, Mike, if you're use that, if you're using that as a hedge, why the heck did you close out of all of it? Well, because my call, my long call had gotten pretty deep in the money, even though I'd rolled that up a few times, which we'll talk about as well. So I knew if this thing pulled back 15, 20 bucks, I was going to lose more than that hedge was going to offset. And I just wanted to close it. We were also going on the trip. So I just, I was, I knew the market was extended. So there's a few factors where I just said, Hey, I'm going to close this thing, take it off the table. But I'd started it with three contracts and I only had one contract left when I got up to that point. So I closed out to somewhere along the way. I can't even remember. We'll we'll look at it here in a sec. Okay, so selling calls can help generate some income. It can act as a little bit of a, a hedge for that pullback, for that sideways move, right? Because if, if we go into a period like this, where the stock just kind of goes sideways, what's happening to our long call? Where it's just been sitting at 400 for one, two, three, four, five, six days. Your long call is just experiencing some time decay. It's working against you. But if you've got that sold call against it, now you're offsetting that. You've got a nice edge against time decay, against a pullback. So selling calls is a beautiful thing. So the, the question in the email that I got that I wanted to hit on real quick, and then we're gonna break down um, Netflix a little bit more was what in the world happens if they exercise that short call? Does anyone else have that same question? Sound off in the chat if you do. If you're wondering what in the world happens because you're owning a call option, you or you own a call option underneath it, and then we're selling a call which gives someone the right to buy stock from us and we don't own any, we don't own stock. Right. So is anyone else is anyone chiming in on the chat there, Lee? Does anyone else yeah, have that a question? Matter, as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people, Tom, Mike, uh, and James has said, um, talk about what happens when your short calls go in the money. You know, do you roll? What do you what's your yeah. strategy? Because I have Absolutely. a certain strategy because I'm <laughs> I'm doing this on several positions and mm -hmm. there's a different uh philosophy that I have with different types of calls that I'm selling. So Absolutely. what's my so, underlying? So what happens? So when we sell a call, okay, there's someone on the other side of that transaction that bought the call, right? So here's us, here's someone else, here's them. Okay, so this gives them the right to buy stock from us. Well, we don't own any stock. So how can we sell stock to them if we don't own any stock? Well, if we were to get exercised, we would have to take a short stock position in order to deliver 
where they want to buy stock. Okay, so if you ever been put stock on a money press, right? When you've sold a put, you wake up and you're like, oh man, I now have 300 shares of stock. I'm the owner of 300 shares. Well, this is just the opposite of that. You would be short stock. So your position would be negative. So like in my Netflix example, I had three contracts going. So if I got exercised on that short call, I would have a negative 300 shares of stock. I would be short the stock. Okay, now that's a pretty big position, right? That's a pretty big cash position for something like, Net like Netflix, a $400 plus stock. So if you were to find yourself in that situation, your short stock, maybe that puts you way over your account value, your buying power. What do you do? You just close it. Okay, so just like a contract that you're selling to open, this is a short stock position where you sold to open. So you would just have to come in and do a buy to close, or sometimes the broker might call it buy to cover, and then you're out of the position. Okay, so you'd be short the stock at the strike price, and then you would close it out. You would buy to close or buy to cover at whatever the stock's trading at, and the math would work out to be almost the exact same. You get to keep the call premium. That's yours, right? Whatever money they paid us for that premium, we keep, and then we close it out. So I've done some videos on that on the money press side. It's nothing to worry about. It's no big deal. You don't have any issues unless you don't act on this, then the broker will just close it out for you. It's a maintenance margin call. You just got to close it. So you do this buy to close or this buy to cover, that position goes away. Okay. Our short call has been exercised, so that's gone. So what would we be left with? We'd still have our long call. We close out the short stock and we're just back in business. So the question of, hopefully that makes sense. Nothing to worry about. If it ever happens, just close it. Close the short stock position, buy to cover, buy to close. You're out of it. And it doesn't change the math really much at all is if you were still in that short call, just like on a money press. So how do I handle it? Great question. So I jumped into this trade right here. Two days later, it had gone from about 360 to around 400. See where this thing was trading then two days later? So this thing had exploded. And here was my initial position. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Let me clear this off. So here was the initial position. Buy to open, bought the 350 calls, and then did a sell to open of the 380 calls. Okay, so remember Netflix, when I made this trade right here, this was um, the stock, the underlying stock was trading at about 360. Okay. So this thing popped up, made a nice jump, and I rolled up these long calls. Okay. Netflix exploded that next day. Okay. So when we saw this type of a move, it came in, opened here rallied, 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 closed way up here. I rolled up my long call. Now, why in the world, why in the world would I sell the 350 calls? Okay, I did a sell to close and then bought the 365s. Why in the world would that ever make sense? What do you accomplish by rolling that up? Well, I put some some profit in my pocket, right? I bought this for 10,500 
I sold it for almost a $5,000 gain. So I'm locking that in. And then Lee, what's got a higher delta? The 350 call or the 365 call? Yes. <laughs> the 365 <laughs> call. So right. So what what's going on here is this one's a lot further in the money. So if the stock pulls back, this has a lot more to lose. This has is it's gone deeper in the in the money. This has a higher delta when the stock was now trading at, you know, 400 ish. Okay. This 365 has less to lose if it pulls back. Right? And Netflix covering all that ground, I thought, heck, you know, I want to keep riding this thing, but if it goes into a pullback, I want to lose a little bit less and I do that with the 365 call. But if it takes off again, am I still long Netflix? Yeah. I still had 3 contracts. Okay, so by rolling up my long call, it's kind of a way to take profit, make the trade a little less bullish, just a little less, not a ton. If we went and we looked at those strike prices now, you know, if this was a if this was a 70 delta, and I'm just throwing this out there, this one's probably like a 65 delta. Okay, and what that means is for every dollar Netflix moves. You either make or lose 70 cents. Here you're making or losing 65 cents. So by rolling that up, I just made the trade a little less bullish. And I put some of this profit, that almost five grand in profit in my pocket. Okay. Now, four days later, I made another adjustment. I rolled it up again. Okay. So I sold that to close. Okay, so let's follow some of this. Let me clear this off. So right here, I had almost a $5,000 profit. Now I was losing money on the call side. That's uh, that's something to keep in mind. That wasn't pure profit, okay? But then I reloaded, I bought this for 12.3, sold it a few days later at 14.7, okay? So made about another two grand here. All right, so what did I do from there? Well, I reloaded, did a buy to open. Now I'm at the 390 calls. Okay, so by rolling that up again, I was able to profit right here, that 2,000, and make the trade just a little less bullish. Okay, so this was on 530. So that was right here.